So let's get started. Uh, can you tell me like what are all the tools that you have worked on, and also can you tell me like few of the tasks that you have worked on? Uh, yeah. So I'm currently working as a uh, in a onboarding team. So we'll create the CI/CD pipelines for various uh, applications, mostly based on Java uh, web application. Uh, so I have used uh, GitLab, uh, Jenkins, uh, Sonar Cube, uh, Nexus IQ, Nexus. Uh, and so before the deployment and we have docker and kubernetes as well so and we have a uh, hip hop vault for uh, to store our secret so these are the tools that uh, like we, we will use and create a ci cd pipeline for uh, for the application okay cool and also can you tell me few of the tasks that you have worked on uh, like in the current engagement or like in the previous engagement in the current task yes right yeah so like creating pipelines only so we'll have a shared library mm-hmm. because uh, for each application we'll have uh, like a 20 plus components so we'll have a common shared library mm-hmm. and from the jenkins file we'll pass the inputs like uh, the build command and the sonar project name project key and which nexus repo everything will pass it from jenkins file uh-huh. so that we can able to easily handle so uh, so in our uh, jenkins we'll use multi branch pipeline Uh, mm-hmm. because um, like uh, they will have a different branching strategy that each application so mm-hmm. uh, for each all the branches you can see it in the multi branch mm-hmm. and we will have separate cd job uh, so if they want to deploy only uh, like if they want to deploy the previous artifact they can trigger that job only or ci to cd is also possible both the way we have configured so like this i uh, will create for all the environments which application teams have like uh, dev test uh drp for rod for mm-hmm. all the applications yeah. okay and also have you been in i mean like you mentioned that uh, your work done kubernetes and docker so in your day to day day activities also you will be uh, in, involved uh, in this particular task or like a containerization task or not ah uh, yeah so like for docker based application like in the pipeline itself like uh, uh, we have a stage called uh, docker mm-hmm. build and docker push and all uh um, so we'll add uh, those stages mm-hmm. and we'll de- uh, and uh, it's a docker based uh, like a docker uh, like we will deploy only the container it's not a kubernetes base okay so like we'll uh, we, we will uh, in the playbook we'll write like we'll pull the in- we will stop the container and remove the container mm-hmm. and pull the new image and we will uh, run as a container so okay so like, uh, like, like Yeah. So uh, you guys are in still containers not into kubernetes is what you mean you mean to say uh, right? yeah mm-hmm. okay yeah. but uh, so when in like then how uh, you said that when in like you have a knowledge in kubernetes or like uh, so you guys have started some pos uh, correct yeah uh, our environment is in uh, kubernetes only like our jenkins our sonar everything is in kubernetes mm-hmm. and uh, we uh, and i have a, lo- a knowledge on kubernetes as well and uh, Uh, our uh, uh, like while building the pipeline right, we will use kubernetes for template so mm-hmm. there is an option in the cloud gist jenkins so we'll use that and uh, for each application they will have different uh, java and maven version and java gradle with combination will be different so we'll uh, mention the docker image in the kubernetes for template in the jenkins so that mm-hmm. we'll use that uh, as a agent and we'll run those maven or gradle commands inside that particular container Okay, uh, and also let's assume if you want to do any manual uh, activity, you want to automate it. So in your uh, mm-hmm. current engagement, like uh, like current uh, um, current work, where and like how you guys are doing? So you guys are using Python or shell scripting? Ah, uh, shell scripting. Ah, uh, really. Okay, okay. So then, uh, so in uh, Unix, uh, so first let's start with Unix uh, uh, questions. I mean, uh, I would say the basic. Uh, basic commands in unix and also when like little bit of scripting mm-hmm. also okay so mm-hmm. so let's assume when like one command is there uh, so basically that particular mm-hmm. i i won't say command so let's assume it is a shell script okay so it okay. it will take around like uh, let's assume 8 uh, hours or 9 hours okay so here the problem is see i can't keep my machine in a interactive mode or uh, in a um, mm-hmm. when like i can't be in a interactive mode for 8 hours right so let's assume i want mm-hmm. to work yeah. another uh, task so that like uh, so i want to uh, flip the one more terminal and i'll be working on that that is fine but when like see um, mm-hmm. i don't want to wait until that script runs i want something like it should be mm-hmm. running in the background so mm-hmm. 
So mm-hmm. how do you do that? Uh, we have no hub command so mm-hmm. that if you run uh, in inside a no hub, uh, it will run in the background. So okay. That, uh, so user can use the UI to do their work. uh i agree uh, but see no hub is for running a process in the background mode right like let's assume if you want to run a process in a detached mode so maybe we will go for uh, no hub so but here it is a script wherein like uh, there is a start time and the end time after some specific time so wherein like uh, uh, that script has to stop and it should get some output see i agree wherein like if it is a process you can go and you can use no hub but as i said it is a shell script like you can give and at the end after the shell script okay no worries no worries and uh, do you know what is exit status in shell scripting uh, yeah exit status like uh, the previous command whichever uh, ran is like um, if it is success it will be zero if it is a, fa- a failure or uh, it the exit like uh, status will be non zero okay so if the status is non zero uh, anything other than zero so you mean to say that uh, uh, the execution yeah. is failure yeah hmm. okay and also uh, do you know what is debug mode in shell script ah uh, yeah uh, like you can you set hyphen next uh, uh, so that it will be in a debug mode okay and um, also let's assume we're in like uh, there is one command okay so let's assume uh, there is a docker pull command okay so uh, the scenario is uh, let's say you have image names uh, in one of the files and what the script is doing is uh, continuously it is reading one by uh, one the image and then it is pulling so the script is basically you can assume it as to increase uh, or like uh, to build up uh, the docker cache inside any machine okay let's assume that okay so one problem here is see uh, there is a docker pull command so when and like the pull was successful or not i want to store it in one of the log file see there are some images where in like it 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 will definitely be successful there are some images it might not be successful mm-hmm. because that uh, tags might be kind of removed from uh, hub.docker.com or if they are pulling it from private registry so maybe that if they don't find that uh, tag right the docker pull command will fail mm-hmm. right yeah. so i want to now have a log where and like what image you got successful what image didn't got successful and all so how do you tackle this particular one okay so um so we need to store all the outputs uh, to a variable right? yeah for, to for each docker maybe to make it simple uh, let's say for example uh, i have a command even though if it is successfully executed or uh it is not executed to the successful but i want to store the output in one single log file okay uh yeah uh, like after execution we can save it in some file like uh, uh the greater than symbol will be there right? so we can store it in uh, the output in the file okay see so if you uh, use a greater than symbol so it's append uh, it's not append right it's it's a um output redirection symbol so let's say for example docker mm-hmm. first pull uh, pull is done so it will go and store it in log but uh, when it comes to the second uh, image let's assume it is failure mm-hmm. okay if it is a failure obviously that uh, only greater than symbol if you use it won't go to the log mm-hmm. file right okay um uh, yeah i'm not sure on this uh, okay can you some loop and we can store it in the log file each time mhm okay no worries or uh, yeah uh, we have like error uh, error in the uh, like a separate file we can uh, push it we have that uh, see i want it in single file so what you meant is like uh, the mm-hmm. successful in one log file another one is like uh, the failures mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. other file no in my mm-hmm. case i want both the things in one uh, single file no worries and yeah. uh, in your project uh, i mean is uh, were there any like monitoring tasks also ah uh, yeah we have monitoring uh, as well uh, okay so we we'll monitor our uh, like jenkins sonar everything is monitored mm-hmm. so can you tell me why do you think monitoring is important actually ah uh, like um 
so if if we have a continuous monitoring we can able to uh, like if some issue in particular server like the storage is full or cpu is full mm-hmm. so we will get uh, suddenly uh, alert so that we can uh, like uh, we can rectify it very quickly till that affects to the customer then. so before that we we can able to rectify it uh yeah till it goes to the 100% or something so before that itself we can able to rectify so the performance of that uh, application will also be like uh, availability will, will be good uh, to the customer that's why we need monitoring okay uh, and also see in uh, when you say monitoring there are a couple of types of monitoring right so metric monitoring log yes. monitoring and all mm-hmm. So what does that mean? What does metric monitoring means? What does like log monitoring means? So can you also give one uh, one example at least for both the monitorings? Uh yeah. So um metrics monitoring means like uh, the application performance we can monitor like uh, uh like the CPU and memory usage that and all uh, like um, metrics monitoring. So we can fetch that metrics from the, the particular server and we can monitor it. Uh, log monitoring means the data uh, of that particular uh, log that like we can monitor it so that we can able to uh, like um, um, like is there any data breaches or security related we can uh, the compliance related we can uh, find it there and if there are any issues we can check it in the log see if we need it so that's why we have log monitoring also. Mm-hmm. Can you also give the example of one for uh, metrics monitoring and one for tools which is there in metrics monitoring and also log monitoring? Uh, like um, for met- metrics, we can use Prometheus Grafana. Mm-hmm. Uh, for log monitoring, uh, in our project, we have uh, Dynatrix. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll use that for uh, log monitoring. Okay. so uh, in, in alerting when in like um, so what tools you are you guys are using uh alerting like uh, prometheus grafana is also there then dynatrix is also there both are there okay and uh, so as you said prometheus so uh, do you know like how do we uh, kind of like configure endpoint uh, which prometheus can monitor and like uh, fetch the data out of it and then mm-hmm. send the alerts or like mono get the data data from out of that particular endpoint yeah. do you know that like how to configure uh, it uh, yeah like i have some idea like uh, prometheus.yml file will be there so there we can add our rules and uh, the uh, target agents uh, uh, like target agents uh, ip uh, so uh, the host we can add it so that if we run that uh, it will monitor that particular uh, uh, like endpoint it will uh, monitor uh, mm-hmm. like that we can configure it in some okay uh, and also you said that you, you guys are like monitoring jenkins right jenkins uh, from prometheus mm-hmm. uh, uh, so mm-hmm. how uh, do you know how to configure that like how basically uh, it is how it is able to get the uh, metrics about the jenkins uh yeah so like, we'll have that uh, uh like so that um, end point we will uh, configure it in the uh that yml file right so that it will be continuously monitoring um, with uh, with the end point so if mm-hmm. there is any uh, anything uh, like uh, if it gives some other other than 200 uh, like um, response uh, we'll get an alert uh, like a um, uh, mail or service now ticket uh, it will like it will reflect it so that uh, it's everything will uh, look into that uh, that issue okay so do you want to configure anything because uh, see prometheus you'll give the information about jenkins but obviously uh, mm-hmm. somewhere do you need to configure a few things in uh, jenkins yeah. also uh, uh, in jenkins i'm not sure because uh, uh, like in the from the dynatrix uh, like we will install only one is and Uh, mm-hmm. in the server directly so we won't do any configuration uh, in the jenkins way mm-hmm. okay and uh, so also so let's assume you said log monitoring metric monitoring right so let's assume mm-hmm. uh, if data is full like disk is full so in that mm-hmm. case maybe what is the uh, things where like you consider are doing it on that particular instance 
uh, so like after alert came what is my steps here yeah so? right so maybe let's assume uh, more... the machine as a uh, 16 gb of uh, ram or like let's assume the uh, the disk whatever it is connected where 100 gb it was and it is almost like uh, full until 95% so now mm-hmm. i want to kind of like uh, reduce that so i want to take a, mm-hmm. a some kind of like um, a steps to maybe reduce that disk mm-hmm. usage yeah so in our project we face this uh, like mostly the temp file will get filled most mm-hmm. of the time mm-hmm. so uh, like um, sri team uh, usually go and check where in which first it will we will check uh, where uh, the storage is uh, like more like in which folder mm-hmm. or uh, uh, so we'll check that so mm-hmm. if there is something in the temp folder we'll remove those files or we will back up in some uh, other server and on and we'll remove it mm-hmm. and uh, yeah these are the steps they will do usually so is that the shell script which will be running in your machine or uh, like how it is like you and, guys manually will go uh, and trigger it yeah uh, yeah so like uh, once the alert came it will raise a service now ticket mm-hmm. so they will manually go and check uh, like uh, why it uh, like why it got filled and what mm-hmm. and they will uh, remove those uh, unwanted logs and all okay so let's assume uh, so you have been assigned to that task uh, uh, so there is a folder wherein like okay. which, is, which is consuming mm-hmm. more uh, files and uh, data i mean uh, junk mm-hmm. files are getting created so let's assume um, so in that ticket also you will get a information saying that whatever the files has been created so since last 10 days i want to remove that in that particular specific folder so uh, could you please tell me the command mm-hmm. for that to uh, delete the okay. files so which are 10 days delete back the oh. old, uh, uh, yeah. yeah so we have find command so find and the particular folder mm-hmm. and uh, a hyphen m time uh, if option is there Mm-hmm. and plus 10 means like uh, the last 10 days um like if any uh, type is file so hyphen type tab mm-hmm. and uh, hyphen delete so using this command uh, last 10 days uh, log uh, like uh, file we can remove it in the particular folder okay so do you know like in shell script there are uh, two commands where like break mm-hmm. and exit exit statements are there mm-hmm. so do you know about that yeah so uh, yeah so yeah break means like uh, if you want to break that loop like any for loop or while loop if you want to break that we can do uh, like use break command mm-hmm. exit uh, command means it will exit the whole script it's the shell script it will come out of the script yeah, this, that's the difference between uh, break and exit so could you please explain it again because it was little breaking so okay okay so break means uh, like uh, in the in any uh, for loop or if loop or like while loop so if you break that particular loop particular while loop we can use uh, break so it will come out of that particular loop and it will execute the next command in the shell script okay so if we use x0 it will come out of the shell script like after that any command is there also it won't execute it will come out of the shell script exit zero means okay and uh, so you mentioned that like uh, you know where in like kubernetes a little bit right so mm-hmm. can you tell me uh, what are all the status a pod can have so i mean uh, I... yeah hmm. let's go ahead sorry yeah pod a status yeah. yeah so we have four uh, status in the pod like uh, pending so mm-hmm. pending means like um, con- like any one of the container inside the pod is still uh, not ready like uh, pulling the image something like that it is there so that's why it is in pending status and if it is running status all the containers inside the pod is up and running so mm-hmm. uh, it's in a running status and uh, succeeder means like uh, uh, that container will start and it will be succeeded and it will uh, terminate automatically uh, like so it won't restart again so it, it's a success uh, status mm-hmm. mixed is failed so if any of the container like uh, the um, container is not up like some issues while pulling the image and on it will be the fail status okay and uh, have you come across like uh, errors like uh, uh, or double om error or like config not found error so have you come across these statuses 
while running in a uh, um you know it's like side car container or uh, in it container so we can use those concept mm-hmm. so that it will uh, like we can we can add the container so while starting the uh, pod like while the uh, pod is started so it will be used mm-hmm. and uh, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it will execute while starting the pod okay let's assume we're in like um uh we have a uh, multiple clusters you said the uh, dev qa and all will be there right obviously mm-hmm. you have a qa instance or like test instance or a production instance so respectively you will have uh, basically different different clusters also right mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so uh, let's assume i want to connect to two clusters like from my mission uh, i have access to test cluster and also where in like a production cluster so then how do you connect like uh, from your mission what is the uh how, basically f- first question is how mm. do you connect to the kubernetes cluster so from your let's assume mm. windows machine uh like even if it is a mac machine so how do you connect from your local to that kubernetes cluster and also when uh, you yeah. have uh, two mm. clusters to connect so then how do you manage that with that one uh yeah, so we can uh, uh get you config file uh so we can uh, we can add that to config file in our uh, uh windows machine or mac machine uh and so uh, so using that configuration file we can able to connect to the clusters okay so if it is one cluster is fine but multiple clusters i have so then uh, will you create a multiple config files or how it is and it's multiple uh, files i sent like i haven't done Mm-hmm. only one uh, cube config file i have copied and i have used it mm-hmm. uh, multiple means like we can uh, i think so we can add to config file and uh, using the command line we can switch to that uh, both the clusters mm-hmm. i'm not sure uh, like i haven't used two at a time in my machine in jenkins so how do you rate out of five let's assume like if i ask you like out of five how do you rate yourself on jenkins um, 3.5 to 4 okay okay can you tell me few best practices in jenkins so that uh, you're going to follow if you are given chance to um, own, own that particular job so you want to use all the best practices what are the best practices that you can use mm, yeah so the uh, like we can if we are using the some uh, like variable like multiple times right so we can Uh, uh like define it globally uh, in the env also uh, so that we can use it throughout the pipeline and uh, the second is like uh, using shared library so if you use uh, that's a good practice to use shared library because uh, like each if we want to change something uh, we, we should we no need to go to each jenkins file and change it uh, because we will have a general uh, groovy file so that we can make changes there it will reflect for all the components in the particular application so that's one good practice and uh, i think so we saw the good practice um, okay and how do you store uh, basically your passwords and uh, usernames and all because those are also very <laughs> sensitive information right so how do you do that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so that one uh, we can use uh, uh, like um, Uh, manage credential in the jenkins mm-hmm. so we can store our credential or in our project we will use hashiko vault uh, mm-hmm. uh, to store the credential so from there we will fetch so uh, fetch the credential and we will use it uh, mm-hmm. yeah both manage credential and vault we will use it okay uh, to connect in jenkins for every build it will gonna create console log right so, so the in mm-hmm. for every build so it will be a console log will be there so when in like see let's assume that job is there since one year so so what will mm-hmm. happen when in like if you uh, all the logs when in like that is very important right when in like all the logs mm-hmm. you can't store it so after some certain mm-hmm. time so when in like you want to kind of uh, delete that logs okay so can mm-hmm. we do that in jenkins so yeah we have uh, we have an option to discard old build so mm-hmm. we can keep only the latest 20 or 10 uh, that depends on the like application so mm-hmm. if we want latest 15 
so we can uh, enable that option mm-hmm. uh, so that uh, like uh, only the 15 bills will be there uh, every time mm-hmm. so others will get automatically uh, deleted you said uh, that you had worked on uh, uh, shared library right uh, so Uh, mm-hmm. so can you explain little bit about what why what the what does that shared library if i want to k- kind of like use the con- mm-hmm. shared library do i need to configure anything yeah so in jenkins so we need to first add the shared library so we need to there will be one option called uh, shared library so mm-hmm. there we need to uh, uh, give our shared library name mm-hmm. and uh, git uh, git url we need to give it and the credential for it Mm-hmm. Uh, for that particular because everything will be the private so we won't use public mm-hmm. so we need to give credential and we need to save it in our uh, in the jenkins file we will use that shared library name so in the jenkins file add library and the library name like uh, some um, uh, dsl repo is the shared library name so dsl repo and that particular repo which branch like if i am using my application uh, like main branch or application one branch name so any branch name will use that so we'll give that the branch name so the uh, so that it will uh, call those uh, like uh, shared library so then we will call the groovy file so the main groovy we will have it in the shared library so the main groovy we will call it the name of the groovy we will call it and we will pass the um, like uh, uh, in on the variables like uh, sona project name build command everything we will pass it to that particular uh, in the library also we will have the all the stages like uh, check out or uh, build sona cube everything mm-hmm. so each stage will call one more groovy like the same wars folder Mm-hmm. we will have uh, like maven dot groovy will have so mm-hmm. we'll call that particular groovy mm-hmm. uh, and that in that uh, maven dot groovy we'll call the container uh, like as i said before uh, we'll use kubernetes pod template as each template so we'll call the particular maven container mm-hmm. and into the container uh, we'll run maven commands like mn clean build and the uh, setting dot xml file and form dot xml file everything we'll mention it So okay. we can use it for one application uh, and uh, like 30 components is also there mm-hmm. we can use the same uh, pipeline you know. okay can we use uh, um, multiple i mean like mm-hmm. see when you say jenkins file are like jenkins pipeline mm-hmm. so there will be many stages mm-hmm. can we use uh, mm-hmm. uh, different different agents for different different stages so is it possible in a uh, single pipeline yeah 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 we can use it inside the particular stage we can add the agent Mm-hmm. and the label of that agent we can give it so that mm-hmm. it will uh, go to that particular uh, agent yeah. okay possible. let's assume for all the stages i want the same agent so then how do i do that uh, so in the starting of the pipeline we can uh, so if it is a declarative pipeline uh, mm-hmm. we will have pipeline the first one the sec in the next line you can give uh, agent and the curly bracket label and the label of that uh, mm-hmm. called uh, sorry that slave in agent mm-hmm. you can give it so it will be using uh, for all the stages if we want for particular stage uh, we can, in the particular st- after the stage name mm-hmm. uh, we will give uh, the next line you can give the agent uh, label so that it will take that as uh, agent and it will run those commands okay uh, as a best practice uh, so in my jenkins what i want to do is uh, mm-hmm. so let's assume there is a clone stage build stage sonar cube stage mm-hmm. everything is done and my requirement mm-hmm. is if uh, the pipeline goes well if it is success so at the end mm-hmm. so what i need to do is i want to delete my workspace basically the clone the code will be uh, in the workspace right i want to delete that workspace mm-hmm. the job workspace so can you tell me mm-hmm. how we will do it in mm-hmm. your uh, scripty or like declarative pipeline Okay, so we have a plugin, something like clean, something we have. We can use that. Mm-hmm. And in my project, we we use for template as agent. Right? So uh, at the after the pipeline gets over, that agent itself will get killed automatically. So the workspace won't be there. So okay. like it automatically gets killed. It is so. Okay. So usually, how many builds will gonna happen? So so how many builds will gonna happen in a day? okay so uh, it depends so if they have some de- uh, like uh, some test or t- a test environment testing and on so 
like usually it will be 20 plus conference so say with like 20 bills maybe like 20 or 10 bills uh, mm-hmm. for one oh. application so there are many applications uh-huh. so see uh, when you go for uh, the jenkins file uh, so basically uh, we will going to store mm-hmm. it in github and uh, there will be a version mm-hmm. so if something happens mm-hmm. to the job configuration so you i mean if something has gone wrong you can change it you can go back to previous commits and you can check it out what is the mm-hmm. things you know but can we implement the same thing for my freestyle job because the freestyle job is more of like playing with like mm-hmm. jenkins ui right so if you want to mm-hmm. uh, let's say for example i want something like uh, have a versioning on that so something goes wrong so i want mm-hmm. to correct it back go back to the previous version mm-hmm. is it possible mm-hmm. i we have uh, plugin for it uh, job configuration history so using that plugin we can have a versioning of freestyle project so that if something is wrong we can go to the previous uh, version of it so we can use that plugin you mean to say uh, you are i mean we can job, use plugins is what you mean to say right yeah uh, job configuration history is the plugin so we can use that plugin to uh, versioning the freestyle job depend depending on a specific keyword in the console log so let's assume uh, mm. a warning so whenever you build let's assume it is a maven project and you have built the project mm. and so that project uh, so the client requirement is whenever he sees warning keyword for 10 times you want mm. to make the build mm. as a uh, fail so is it possible mm. to achieve this uh yeah we can do this um, yeah so using some shell script we can uh, do this uh, like uh, like going to the console and uh, it will check for warning keywords uh, yeah we can do it uh, for every build obviously uh, there will be numbers right so 1 2 3 and you know, mm-hmm. wherein like it will be printed mm-hmm. in jenkins uh, job when you go right yeah. so i want to change that mm-hmm. i want to customize that so is it possible to uh, customize that particular one yeah we can customize it uh, that is something called uh, current dot uh, some uh, i didn't remember that exact name uh, mm-hmm. current dot description something like current dot build uh, so we can customize it like we can add uh, the description and we can change the uh, build number like style and all mm-hmm. so i think so current build dot something mm-hmm. uh, I didn't remember the exact name, but it starts with current or something. So, do you know what is Ansible facts? Ah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. So, a fact means like uh, in the runtime, if you want to store some variable and we need to use it in the playbook, we can use uh, the facts. Mm-hmm. And we have gathering facts also. So, while starting the playbook it will gather all the facts of the particular uh, server mm-hmm. so yeah mm-hmm. so is it possible wherein like uh, because see let's assume mm-hmm. i am executing a simple task i don't want to kind mm-hmm. of like uh, get any information about machine maybe other uh, server the opposite uh, whichever mm-hmm. the node i am trying to execute my ansible playbooks so the information mm-hmm. about that i don't need so is it possible to stop that particular thing uh, yeah like gathering facts we can set it to false so that it won't uh, mm-hmm. uh, like it, uh, it get that uh, fact so it will it won't uh, like happen so what kind of information that, uh, maybe in that mm-hmm. fact you might expect like what are the information it might have uh, i think so like uh, uh, the host name and something uh, the and which type of uh, linux type you are using Mm-hmm. So, like a complete that server related uh, information we can see there mm-hmm. uh, yeah. so jim uh, see you are writing a playbook uh, to kind of like uh, bring up uh, postgres master slave setup okay so po- not po- mm-hmm. postgres you can assume it any tool okay, let's assume kubernetes itself okay. kubernetes will have master and slave right so here yeah, mm-hmm. my uh, requirement is i want to write only single playbook okay mm-hmm. but uh, your uh, the requirement is uh, wherein like the host file will be there right so the host file is also mm-hmm. one and also wherein like ansible playbook also only one but there will be a uh, few commands that i want to run it only on nodes so on slaves let's assume slaves it shouldn't run on master so then how do you kind of like uh, 
so we can have role uh, role so while uh, calling we can call only the per- uh, like role for master and uh, no we can have separate so while triggering we can mention like only this role should no uh, so let's uh, say uh, to make it little uh, mm-hmm. even more simpler uh, so let's assume see mm-hmm. uh, i am doing a cube adm setup okay so in master i want to install cube adm and uh, in node also i want to install mm-hmm. cube adm but cube ctl command line is there right i don't want to install it in uh, mm-hmm. my node i want to install it in only mm-hmm. master see there are few things which are very common across mm-hmm. both but only few mm-hmm. very less items which are not common that i wanted to kind of like uh, avoid it in running like in the node in the slaves let's assume mm-hmm. Okay, so we can use some then condition like if it is uh, like uh, master it should run and uh, for slave it should not run the then uh, condition. Uh, But how do you identify whether it is a master or a slave? Um, okay. Uh, okay, fine, no worries. And uh, uh, is it possible wherein like um, uh, basically a, a copy file from one remote server to another remote server? let's assume uh, there is a machine uh, remote uh, a server and uh, machine remote b server okay so is it possible to kind of like copy files between them by using ansible uh so yeah we can uh, it, uh, so in the host file we will have two ips right yeah so let's just to be meeting yeah so let's assume there are two machines addresses i have given so i want to copy mm-hmm. files between them by using ansible i think so it is possible uh, but i'm not sure like how to do it but it will be possible i guess uh, mm-hmm. okay uh, is it possible let's say for example depending on some system environment variable uh, so i want to set mm-hmm. some value or like i want to execute some task okay depending on uh mm-hmm. some environment variable on the remote machine i want to execute some task uh yeah we can do it like uh, an environmental variable means uh, the host name something like that so yeah so let's assume host name itself uh yeah we can do it like uh, we can use the like Yeah, it's what we need to run here. So, See, uh, let's, like assume, uh, uh, let's assume I have a list of prod servers and uh, QA servers, okay? So my requirement is, uh, so uh, assume uh, the assumption is all the prod uh, server names will gonna start with uh, prod and some uh, mm-hmm. random integer or like alphanumeric value. Okay. And in QA also, it's, it starts QA hyphen some random values, okay? Mm-hmm. Here my question is, um, uh, so depending on this value so host name is there right if that host name has a prod in it okay so then i don't want to execute some task let's assume deletion task some deletion of files is there that task i don't want to execute okay so if we have like uh, inventory uh, underscore host name is a environmental variable i guess so mm-hmm. we can compare it like if when uh, this particular environment name is uh, like something like something equal to prod it starts it should execute that task so we can have a condition so mm-hmm. otherwise it won't run so we can use that uh, yeah. so in ansible there are uh, modules like copy and template do you know what are those mm-hmm. like uh, why it is used uh, yeah so copy is like like directly we are copying some file directly like whatever content is there it will copy it uh but uh, template means like uh, it's a uh, it's a template like if you use some uh, variables inside it like some uh, version like uh, like some application version dollar version mm-hmm. uh, we will pass as a extra variable as uh, something so it will get append and it uh, it will be copied so it won't directly copy as dollar in the version it will mm-hmm. append a value for it and uh, it will uh, copy it so we can use for that uh, uh, template okay so let's assume in the template okay so you have created a template file uh, so you are using a uh, template module and you are copying it but in that template right as you said like variables we can use so 
so my requirement is uh, so there are some configurations i want to take the machine ip where i am let's assume there is a remote one and remote two two servers i want to execute ansible okay yeah. so while copying this uh, template module i want to in one of the line i want to uh, place that machine's ip where i'll be executing right that machine's ip i want to keep and then i want to copy so is it possible the host ip uh, not yeah, host ip sorry it. not uh, okay. the uh, master machines are where i am executing the ansible program. it's not that when like wherever it will get executed right that machine's ip yeah. should be remote uh, yeah yes yeah so we have one uh, uh, like variable uh, uh, template underscore host so we can use that or uh, ansible underscore all uh, ip v4 addresses there so we can mm-hmm. use that uh, variable so that it will get that ip replaced uh, in the template yeah. okay for each server okay and uh, so let's assume we're in uh, so you have some playbook uh, you are installing java mm-hmm. okay by using ansible playbook okay. by using apt module mm-hmm. you are installing java okay so mm-hmm. so when like uh, so uh, whenever you run for the first time if java is not installed it will gonna install and uh, it will gonna run all the other tasks also mm-hmm. and when you run for the second time what will happen uh like i think so ansible itself won't uh, do it like it has the capability if mm-hmm. it is already there it will say okay and it will go to the next one it it's like unchanged uh, so uh, okay it won't change in it won't run okay so but here uh, see i have one th- uh, one thing to uh, i want uh, some other way wherein like let's assume uh, uh, first uh, it has to check whether java is uh, installed or not if it is installed then only mm-hmm. it has to run that particular java installation task if already java is there it has to skip that mm-hmm. so is it possible to achieve it by using ansible playbook ah uh, yeah so we can use register module so we can uh, we can check it with uh, using register we can save those and uh, we can check like if it is exist or not uh, so um, like if it is exist it, it we can skip that uh, or else we, it will run that uh, task so we can use register module do you know when like when i run a playbook right so i'll get some kind of logs mm-hmm. right on the screen mm-hmm. i want to get even more like uh, so very low level information also i want to get so very granular mm-hmm. level logs i want to get it so is it possible mm. ah yeah so while running the command we can use hyphen b v b mhm in your project so where like what are all the build tools you have used uh, so uh, whether it is a i mean what kind of a projects and also what are all the build tools that you have used uh mostly it's a java based uh, application mm-hmm. uh, we we'll use uh, maven and gradle uh, mostly maven a uh, few gradle is also there mm-hmm. and uh, and one or two dot net projects also there uh, ms build uh, build tool. can you tell me like uh, how do you build wherein like let's assume if a maven application is given so what are the mm-hmm. commands that you are going to use to build an application yeah so mostly we will use uh, mvn clean package or uh mvn clean install so uh, like in a uh, pipeline so we will call that uh, maven container so inside that we will run those uh, commands uh, mvn clean install and uh, the setting dot uh, xml and form dot xml file we will mention it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it is a gradle we will use uh, gradle clean build uh, uh jacko test port uh, that the command we will use it. Mm-hmm. uh yeah you mentioned that like you've worked on a couple of pipelines and all right can you give me one pipeline mm-hmm. so which uh, basically covers all the stages and uh, so till the deployment from maybe triggers mm-hmm. point mm-hmm. from triggers point till the deployment can you explain me how uh, the flow goes okay the flow okay, yeah, so first uh, will be like uh, if that open has webbook uh, created or fcm call uh, so once the commit is done it will automatically trigger otherwise a few application will come and manually they will trigger it whenever they want uh, the ci pipeline so mm-hmm. uh, so ci pipeline so first will be the checkout stage then uh, will be uh, build stage so maven or gradle or uh, that depends on the application 
so next will be the sonar cube space so i will do sonar cube scan everything and uh, the next will be the quality gate uh, stage we'll check the quality gate uh, so whether it's okay or error we'll uh, we'll check it and uh, move to the next stages next to side view so it's also a scanning tool uh, it will mainly find the violations in the dependencies so mostly the java based application we will use many dependencies so it will scan and it will tell us like this dependency this version is older like we can use the uh, newest version something like that it will tell in a report so then after that we will push our artifact to the next step. so if it is a docker based application will a uh, next stage will be like uh, docker uh, build and docker push will be there uh, so that stage next will be the triggering the cd so we will trigger some ci to the cd job uh, cd is a normal pipeline job will trigger that uh, if in build uh, job uh, we have a plugin so if in build job will trigger that uh, cd job uh, so in the cd job uh, will uh, use uh, ansible tool uh, so will uh, in our project we have ansible tower okay so we'll have playbooks in a git repo and in ansible tower will give, give all the configuration so once it trigger that ansible tower template um so it will invoke the playbook and it will execute all the um, tasks we return in the playbook everything we will uh, like it will execute uh, and we have uh, inventory also configured in the ansible tower itself so in the to the particular group it will trigger and it will deploy to all the uh, servers uh, yeah so this uh, yeah so then we will give a email notification for cd also so, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. And you said Ansible tar, right? So why mm. Ansible tar? So I mean, uh, in Jenkins itself, when mm. you're trying to trigger a playbook, so the mm. logs will be there in the Jenkins itself, right? So, and like, what is the need of like Ansible tar there, like? Uh, like it's like a UI based, right? It will be easier for us to configure the trees and the templates and the project. Everything will be easier. And we can like uh, we can uh, like we can store the uh, that logs there like uh, in the template right it, it will store all the logs so in future also if that 15 like we will set as so a 15 builds only it should be there others should be deleted right? in the template but uh, the old uh, template will also be there you can set it and in the UI it will be very easier to see the JSON output of uh, each task right. So if you are doing something for uh, like uh, uh, triggering the shell script, we can easily see the uh, output of the shell script and uh, error in the shell script. Everything in the UI we can able to see and we can uh, accordingly can able to like uh, figure it out easily more than that uh, CLI command will do it. Right? So it like in the UI it will be very easy to uh, debug or stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, see, well, let's assume CA is uh, you, uh, whatever from your explanation I got that, where like uh, mm -hmm. there will be one CA job, and uh, so mm -hmm. there will be another like CD job, so that will be manually mm -hmm. triggered or like it will be upstream or a downstream job. It it will be obviously uh, upstream job, is what I got to know. Yeah. But here, uh, uh, CA is upstream. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, CD is, yeah, CA is upstream job, mm -hmm. CD is a uh, downstream job. And we can trigger CD individually also. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's a if it is a uh, Tomcat based application, right? So we'll trigger the CD job. We'll give all the inputs like branch name, everything. We'll give it, and we use uh, an, uh, like uh, Nexus API, uh, so REST API. Uh, so wh while triggering, uh, if it is CI to CD, the latest artifact it will automatically take it. So mm -hmm. like this, you have script. If they are doing manually, means they will try to the two previous version also right so we'll have latest 10 in the drop down so they will select uh, whatever artifact they want they will select it uh, maybe the previous one or latest one so latest will be in the top so if they want the previous one they can select it we'll upload the upload to nexus with the timestamp and the commit id so they can easily find the latest uh, like the previous one and they will deploy it so that option is also there so uh, both uh, is there continuous CD or uh, individual uh, independent CD also we can do. 
Okay. And uh, so when you say CD automatically, which is the uh, downstream job will be triggered by your CI. So which environment mm-hmm. it will going to deploy the CD job, uh, which is triggered? Yeah. So uh, like uh, CD, uh, like some development branch means it will automatically deploy to dev. Mm-hmm. So if they want approval, uh, we can keep it. But uh, like usually for lower environment, we won't give any Appro- uh, like approval, manual approval, it will mm-hmm. automatically go to there. Mm-hmm. So other uh, environments like test or pre-prod, uh, there we will have a manual approval. Uh, so uh, like the branching strategy depends. So one of the application has four branches. So one mm-hmm. is for dev, test, uh, pre-prod and prod. So mm-hmm. each branch will trigger the CD pipeline. So accordingly, it will uh, deploy to the respective stages. Uh, see, sorry, environment. So uh, if the one application has from the master branch, they will trigger to more uh, like a test and uh, a pre-prod. Okay. So uh, and prod, both all three environments they will do. So in the multi-branch pipeline, before triggering, uh, there is a build with parameter. So they will select during the CI itself where they want to deploy it. So we'll give, uh, they will select and they will trigger. So based on that input, it will uh, trigger the CD job and it will go to the particular environment. So the scripts are like that. Uh, so that means you're telling like in your CD, uh, you have a logic where mm. depending mm. on the upstream parameters are like uh, mm. if manually trigger, depending on the user inputs, it will going to deploy. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And usually if something goes wrong, let's assume uh, your CI mm. or like CD gone wrong. So uh, mm. who will be responsible? Like what is, let's assume you're responsible for it. Like, what are all the actions mm-hmm. that you might take? So, if CI fails, we'll check why it fails, in which stage it fails. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, if it fails in something like sonar quality gate, we'll go to the um, a project and we'll see, mostly it, it will be like a failure because of that uh, quality gate. So, mm-hmm. we'll check that. Mm-hmm. And uh, mostly... Uh, like uh, if it is a build of failure, so we'll check where it is failing, like uh, whether that dependency that it is not there in the nexus because of that uh, it is failing. So mm-hmm. uh, we'll check that. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, in the CD, like recently we faced one issue, like uh, uh, like in the production we'll store all the credential in the for the only production we use uh, all the credential in the Hashiko point. Mm-hmm. So uh, that wall token will to, uh, expire every 30 days. So we configure and we left it. It's more than 30 days. They are trying to do prod deployment. It got failed. So we we checked that it says access denied. Like could not log into one. So then we came to know like uh, that wall token got uh, expired. So again we created new token. We configure it. So like few of the issues. Yeah, these are the issues. We, uh, like I will check it. Okay, and also you said uh, Sonar uh, Cube, uh, mm-hmm. wherein like uh, Sonar uh, Quality Gate and all. So, mm-hmm. so can you tell me like in Quality Gate, what are all the conditions that you guys mostly check, uh, like mm-hmm. in your uh, current work? Uh, yeah, so that also application to application varies. So for one application, one of the application we use like uh, code coverage should be greater than ninety percent in new code and as well uh, overall code. In the both sections, it should be 90%. And bug sh- uh, in the new code should be zero. And in the overall code, it may be like uh, like one. It should not uh, greater than one. So that condition is there. And uh, duplication lines, it should not be more than three percent. In the both uh, uh, overall code and new code. And mm-hmm. violations will take care. And num uh, yeah then yeah mostly these are the condition we have used this. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. And also, what are the other challenges? Maybe you said about uh, like few build issues and all. Uh, so, mm-hmm. uh, working on any other Ansible tasks, like any other activities, have you faced any challenges? Mm-hmm. So that uh, you thought that like when and, like it took much time and also uh, much logic to uh, kind of like work on that particular challenge. Uh, it's not a challenge. Like it depends on the requirement. Like. Uh, in Ansible, one application as the, like it should trig- uh, like uh, 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 like uh, Ansible will uh, trigger uh, all the servers uh, uh, is as uh, like a serial uh, sorry uh, serial manner right. 
so it will deploy all the servers at a time so during production like uh, that particular service is not available like that particular uh, service in the production it's not available so what we did it, we did in parallel like so first one server it will deploy it will uh, deploy and others will be in uh, like uh, in running condition so once that particular server is up and running like after deployment so we'll go to the next server so that we implemented it and uh, uh, in the docker based application they ask you for the volumes and all so in the using playbook i uh, have created the volumes uh, nfs volume and i have mapped in the container so that uh, even the container is uh, stopped or removed that uh, logs will be copied uh, in the nfs server so that i have implemented uh, mm-hmm. yeah, so these are the things uh, it's like it's new like because uh, in our uh, uh, platform uh, docker based application is the first one it came so i took up and work on it so uh, yeah okay yeah. and also you spoke about some security about the dependencies and all uh, right mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. see uh, and the, in, um, in your project see how the, those dependencies are downloaded because uh, so mm-hmm. will it be directly downloaded from your uh, uh, wherein mm-hmm. like public repository or uh, will it be downloaded uh, it will be placed under your nexus and then it will be downloaded to mm-hmm. your machine yeah will download from the nexus only so in the setting.xml we will give that nexus repo name and the credential everything mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh, it will download from our nexus so if any dependency is not there it will take it from the proxy repo and it will download it uh, and it will store it in the nexus system. like this will use it. okay and also any other security measures uh, you said about like dependency security and like it'll gonna uh-huh. check that security report and it'll gonna report you and also static mm-hmm. code analysis you you guys are doing mm-hmm. so any other uh, uh, security tools that you guys are using uh, no. uh, no only nexus and uh, uh, sonar nexus iq and sonar we have for security i mean if you get any work let's assume you got a work uh, to containerize you want to create a docker file mm-hmm. so how do you work on it like you will directly uh, push your changes to master branch or like how you'll start the work maybe if if the requirement given to you to create a docker file yeah. so first uh, we'll try it in the feature branch because, uh, so i will create a docker file mm-hmm. and uh, like all the steps like uh, from and copy the jar file i need to copy it and uh, expose and uh, entry point everything will be there and mm-hmm. we will uh, merge it to the development branch and we'll test for development so once that uh, is working fine then we'll um, merge that uh, like uh, docker file in master branch as well uh, and master branch and other branches like release branch if they have will add it to their own okay so little uh, so let's go a little back there however like you said you are going to create the feature branch right Mm-hmm. so what is the process when and like if it wants to merge it to develop so so do you take some approvals or something yeah so i'll uh, do a merge request so uh, like uh, my senior will once validate it like uh, whether the docker file uh, is okay or not then uh, if they say oh, it's okay uh, from their side they will merge it to the uh, development branch okay after the approval and uh, let's assume i have uh, this requirement uh, so there is one file uh, so assume mm-hmm. like that is uh, some kind of file wherein like it will store a credentials okay mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. maybe some new guys has joined and uh, so uh, they don't know i mean they've not been a kind of like addicted to that kind of like practices or like uh, methods that uh, the organization is uh, are using okay so here mm-hmm. uh, wherein like they are basically they shouldn't uh, put that passwords uh, they shouldn't hard code that passwords mm. but somehow mm. they were hard coded it and i have pushed it mm. okay. okay so i want to basically mm. stop that thing so when like whenever they put a st- uh, password there mm. so when mm. like i want to give uh, give them information saying that no you are putting the password you shouldn't do this so please mm. remove that and then commit it and also push it mm. so can this be achievable 
okay so automatically or during merge request we need to give commands right we should not call no 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 you, you shouldn't push only so i want uh, okay. in this machine where mm-hmm. like should uh, should be rejected actually okay so i think we can add some rules uh, in um, github or gitlab uh, yeah it Sorry, but I heard some, uh, but uh, I haven't implemented it. But we can add some rules. Uh, so, yeah, uh, if they are hard coding anything uh, in the password, we can add some rules mm-hmm. so that they can't able to commit it. Okay. Uh, let's assume you committed something. Okay. So you raised the uh, MR, and uh, so your uh, senior has given some comment comments actually on that particular mm-hmm. changes, whatever you did, and now. Mm-hmm. you will do those changes let's assume you are doing that mm-hmm. changes you are done with it you have tested in your local now when mm-hmm. i push it obviously this will be one more commit right mm-hmm. so i don't want multiple commits in one mr so let's assume we are following uh, you guys are following one standard that uh, if one mr is raised it should be only one commit mm-hmm. so then how do you kind of like uh, uh, make this two commits into one commit and then a uh, kind of like uh-huh. put it in a mr so we can use uh, git cherry pick command like this so it will merge both the uh, commit as a single command uh, where i get uh, or okay. we can edit uh, edit no worries uh, any other tools that you have worked on like other than these things whatever we discussed mm. yeah and um, yeah these for the and like i did the poc on cloud dc cdro like that is release orchestration uh-huh. uh that i did and like poc that is in cloud dc so uh-huh. like that is used for the release orchestration like uh, uh, once ci is done it will trigger cdro uh, uh like a uh, uh, tool so there the pipeline will start so first deployment will happen so after that ct continuous testing like uh, in if that application has selenium and blaze meter testing it auto, it will also automatically done and based on that test results uh, it will automatically uh, it not test deployment something kind of it so if, if that test results is greater than 80% or uh, like 90% uh, based on the threshold it will move to the next test environment automatically uh, without any manual effort so in in the test environment it will do deployment and testing everything uh so testing team is there uh, like it's a separate team so they will configure all the testing scripts the selenium scripts and all mm-hmm. so uh, based on that uh, at the end for production only we will have a manual uh, approval like the manager will check and they will approve it uh, for the production so this continuous like previously when i was do, uh, like explaining the cd uh, for each environment we need to trigger cd job individually and all right so oh, here it's uh, orchestration so automatically it move through all the uh, environments at the end for production we will have a uh, up so uh, to manage the releases we mm-hmm. have this tool uh, okay uh, you mentioned that like you had worked in shell scripting also right so mm-hmm. any manual activities that uh, you recently automated by using scripting um no uh, like Automate, uh, I I mean, recently on self-reporting. Okay. Now, Aris, uh, so that's it from my side. Uh, it was great talking to you. Uh, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.